you will agree with me that Satan is trying to do all he can to win souls for himself, to grab souls for himself because he knows that the time is near, the end of the world is near. So he is trying to do everything that he can to drag more people, innocent souls to hell. Now, I want to tell you that do not underestimate the intelligence of the devil. Satan is very smart and he will do all he can to deceive many, attract many and possess many into an eternal condemnation with him. He knows he has a very little time on earth and very soon he is going to be sentenced into eternal condemnation and he doesn't want to end up there alone he wants more people with him so this is why we need to be very careful and in these times we need to solely rely on the word of god and remain prayerful now what i'm about to share with you today is a vision that god gave to a sister she sent in this mail a few days ago i decided to pray over it and this is the time that god has given me to share with you god has exposed agents or people that the devil is going to use in these end time to possess and grab more people or more souls just like i said earlier parents need to pray for their children most especially the youth we need to be more extra vigilant in our times in our dealings these days everything around us will be used against us anything that is a necessity to we humans will be used against us the devil is laying his hands on everything so we need to be on a watch out we need to rely on god okay so my name is joseph and if this is your first time watching a video on this channel and you love christian content well, I would like to welcome you and then encourage you to subscribe for more important messages from the Lord like this. Now, make sure you share this video with your friends and family so that they can also receive the message of the Lord. I am going to read this vision the same way it was sent to me. No part has been taken out and nothing has been added to the story. So just pay close attention as I proceed with the reading. Shalom, peace be unto you, brother Joseph and your viewers. Check out my vision and if the Lord permits, then share it on your channel. I will not be offended if my message is not fit to be shared with your audience. But if you do find it fit, then do share it as early as possible because the signs are already coming out. Thank God I found a channel like this to raise an alarm to my fellow Christians. The Lord God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, gave me this vision on the 7th of February this year, 2024. God in his mighty power has exposed the hidden plans of the kingdom of darkness. In the afternoon of that day, I had the vision. This was around 3 p.m. I was watching a television program. The preacher was teaching of the Bible. His focus was on prayer, its power, its necessity, and its transformative impact. An undeniable burden fell upon me while he preached on the screen. He stated that we couldn't just talk about prayer. We had to engage in it fervently. By the time he finished, I was deeply moved and my spirit ignited with a fresh zeal of prayer. My husband and I planned to go to the town to get some groceries. He came to me at around 4 p.m. and I pleaded with him to go get them alone while I stayed behind. He knew I wasn't myself after the sermon, so he understood and left for the shop. I had never felt this way before. The words of the televangelist 
touched my heart so much that I needed to get into prayer with the Lord that moment. I continued to mutter words of prayer, unable to shake the urgency off. I went to my bedroom and locked myself up. I felt guilty before the Lord, claiming to be his child and not being in a consistent relationship with him by spending time with him and praying always. My job and other activities took every time I had. So this time I had planned to spend three hours in my room with the Lord. A few minutes that I started praying, I felt the touch of the Lord and I received deliverance from the Lord. This occurred like I was dazed as if I haven't slept for like years. Suddenly, a strange mist covered me up in the room. It was as if the world outside had disappeared into a fog. I couldn't see beyond the windows. A wave of dizziness overtook me. And as I closed my eyes for a moment, when I opened them, I found myself standing on a long stretch road. Everything was full of silence. The stillness pressed down on me, filling me with fear. As I looked around, trying to understand where I was, my eyes were drawn to the center of the road. There was a chessboard illuminated by a beam of light from above. The chessboard was not like the usual ones I had ever seen. It seemed to be made of entirely gold. I couldn't believe it at first. A chessboard made of pure gold? It seemed impossible, too extravagant to be real. As I stood there, I noticed something even more astonishing. The pieces on the chessboard were moving. They were playing on their own accord, shifting strategically across the golden squares with an intelligence and purpose that seemed almost supernatural. There were no visible players, no hands guiding the pieces. As I stood there, my eyes were drawn to the cane piece. I saw a picture of Barack Obama attached to its side. It was clear and the presence of it on the cane piece struck me deeply. The cane with Obama's picture began to move. Each move was executed with a level of intelligence and confidence that was obvious to me even in the stillness of everything. I watched as the king moved the golden squares with precision, making moves that were not just defensive but boldly offensive. It was clear that this king was dominating the game, bringing about a series of maneuvers that showcased a deep understanding of strategy. The other pieces seemed to revolve around it, each move enhancing the king's position and ensuring its reign. The dominance of the king was evident in every move. It was clear that this piece was ensuring its reign, not through a violent force, but through a calculated and intelligent play. Each move reinforced its position. Each strategy fortified its rule. The game was being played on a higher level, and the king was at the center of it all. My attention was suddenly drawn to two more pieces that had pictures just like the king with Barack Obama's image. I was drawn closer by the Lord to get a clearer view of these pieces. To my surprise, I saw that one of the pieces, a bishop, had a picture of Jay-Z attached to it. The other piece, a queen, displayed a picture of Beyonce. These two musicians' icon, in their own right, were positioned as key players. Jay-Z, as the bishop, moved around the board with calculated precision. Beyonce, as the queen, moved in her distinctive L-shaped patterns. Her movements were dynamic and unpredictable. The queen's unique ability to jump pieces allowed her to navigate the board in ways that other pieces couldn't. 
I noticed the board, each side of the chessboard was marked with the first letter of the four cardinal points, N on the north side, E on the east side, W on the west side, and S on the south side. As the chessboard vanished before my eyes, a more and deeper silence filled the entire area only to be broken by the distant murmur of voices. The sounds seemed to come from beneath the ground as if an unseen crowd was gathered just out of sight. Despite the noise, my surroundings remained empty. My heart pounded with a mixture of curiosity and fear, unsure of what was happening around me. Suddenly, as if out of nowhere, I noticed a man in the distance. He had the appearance of those old prophets in the Bible. White beard and his eyes radiated wisdom. There was something timeless about him. In an instant, it was as if the space between us contracted. And he stood before me, close enough that I could see every detail of his face. At that moment, the man spoke. His voice was calm and steady. And he said only one word, peace. Then he began to speak in earnest. And while I can't recall his exact words to avoid any falsehood, I clearly understood the message he conveyed. He revealed to me that what I had just witnessed was a spiritual scene of the strategies being employed by the kingdom of darkness against the world. The chessboard, the pieces, the movements, they were all representations of a grand plan. The three prominent figures I had seen, Barack Obama, Jay-Z, and Beyonce, had been assigned specific roles within this dark agenda. In a very short time, unless counted by fervent prayer, they would begin to execute their functions with destructive impact. The man unveiled some shocking secrets. He told me that Barack Obama would soon be enthroned as a leader, not in a literal earthly scene, but in the spiritual realm. But in the physical realm, he will be behind someone in his operations. For only a brief period, his rule would be indirect, subtle, influencing global affairs from behind the scenes. However, it wouldn't be long before he would manifest visibly, taking over leadership of the world in a more overt manner. His reign, though initially concealed, would eventually become known to all. Many individuals will serve as his agents in this plan, including the two musicians I had seen. Jay-Z was designated to influence culture and the emotions of people, subtle yet powerful. His music, presence, and public persona would be tools to shift public opinion, sway emotions, and gradually reshape societal norms. Beyoncé, on the other hand, was ordained to make unexpected and creative moves, targeting people's spiritual journeys. Her influence would be more direct and dramatic, leading many away from their faith through her captivating performances and powerful messages. She will influence the world and deploy her spirituality on upcoming female singers. Now, these young singers shall work for her and possess souls through their ear itchy music, their dresses, cosmetics, and sign languages. This will be seen as a civilized modern practices among the youth. Parents need to pray for their children because what is coming will be more than what we have ever seen before. Both Jay-Z and Beyoncé, under the spiritual leadership of Barack Obama, would use their considerable influence to sway public opinion, incite revolution, and cause discord, all with the ultimate aim of instituting Obama's reign in the physical realm. Their actions would be strategic, well-coordinated, and incredibly impactful designed to undermine the foundations of faith and morality in the society. He also explained that the kingdom of darkness had set 
its sights on two of the industry. These industries would become primary battlegrounds in the spiritual war, serving as powerful tools to shape culture, influence minds, and lead people astray. He revealed that Barack Obama would soon rise to claim the title of the Messiah. He would present himself as the savior the world has been waiting for, and many would be deceived by his charisma, charm, and promises. People from all walks of life would bow to him, captivated by his vision and leadership. However, for those who resisted and refused to bow, there would be consequences. The man stressed the critical nature of this situation. This calls for prayer, he said, his voice echoing with urgency. It was as though he was put on a rewind, repeating this call to action with increasing emphasis. This calls for prayer. He repeated this over and over again. His words were deep within me. In the blink of an eye, I was back to myself. Everything I had seen and heard felt incredibly real, more vivid than any dream or vision or a fleeting thought. I want to take this moment to admonish and call on every Christian to recognize the critical importance of prayer and stay rooted in God's word. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 tells us that pray in the spirit of all nations with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep praying for all the Lord's people. Shalom. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining me in listening to our sister's message. I believe you had everything clear for yourself. Um, what I want us to do, like I keep cautioning everyone, we need to seek discernment on this, pray over this message, and let God give you a confirmation of it. Now, there are important things I believe you took from this woman's message. Like I said earlier on, the devil is on the rise. These signs are already coming up. Yes, you can see it. We've been seeing the signs on our television these days. We've been seeing the signs on the internet these days. We've been seeing it in our society. We've been seeing it everywhere. The signs of the end time, the signs of the devil that have risen to destroy lives by trapping them, by trapping them into a sinful way that will take them away from the salvation of our Lord. How I wish that everyone will get to receive this message. How I wish that everyone will know these plans of the devil so that they will not fall for this. We need to be prayerful. This is the time we need to develop a sincere relationship with Jesus Christ. Let no one lead you astray. Get close to God. Work on your faith. Work on your relationship with Jesus Christ. If you are doing anything that you think goes against the will of God, quickly move away from it. Don't please the devil by living in sin. Don't make Satan happy by doing things that will keep you away from Jesus Christ. You know the devil becomes happy when you try to stay away from God. Why are you allowing yourself to be taken away by the devil by these little little things that you do? This human needs are destroying our relationship with God. Don't rely on your human desires. Many of us are locked up in fornication. Many of us are locked down in our lust. Many of us are locked down in our greed for money and wealth. And this is what the devil is using to drive us crazy. We are more focused and centered on earthly desires. Let us wake up from our slumber and know that the devil is behind all these things. Jesus Christ is ready to take you, no matter who you are, no matter where you are coming from, no matter your race. Jesus Christ is for everyone. That is why he came on this earth to come and die for us. Wherever you are, I want you to receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior, as your Lord and personal savior. Come to him for salvation so that the devil will not steal you away from going to heaven. I'm going to leave this message to you and I also want you to bring up your opinions and whatever interpretations you have. Just feel free to leave it in the comment section below. I want to take this opportunity also to 
make you aware that my evangelism team and I have launched a project that we want to undertake in Africa. We want to go to two countries in Africa, that is Ghana and Kenya, to carry out the work of God by spreading the word. Now, if you want to support this project, now this program is called Missionary Project in Africa. I have left a link in the description section of the video if you want to support this project so that we can win souls for God in these end time, just click on the link and give any support that you have and the Lord is going to bless you in abundance. Your support might win a soul for God. This is not compulsory or mandatory, but I believe you will support the work of God. God bless you wherever you are and thank you.